everyone. So here we are. Here I am with the lovely Sophie. Now, slightly worried tonight, because normally I, at this point I say, and if you're watching us live streaming on Facebook and YouTube, I'm a bit like an air hostess. <laughs> the doors are here, here and here. Um, Sophie will pick up your questions. Tonight, not happening. Because tonight, people, Sophie is here on this side of the screen. So if you've got questions, put them in Facebook and in YouTube. And afterwards, <laughs> Sophie will answer them. Because <laughs> she has all the answers about herself. It is lovely to have you on this side of the screen, Sophie. Sophie, as everyone I'm sure by now knows, does all of the pure social media. And for that, I am eternally grateful because <laughs> I am not a social media guru by any means at all. And that's her kind of like day job. <laughs> but her actual passion is art. And you used to run the art school, didn't you? Yeah, so the art school sort of still exists. Um, it's just... At the moment, it's too hard trying to work out how to get classes going again. And so I still do private classes. Well, I will be doing private classes again. But um, uh, and if anyone wants one. But at the moment, until we know what's going on, the art school is having a little rest. Yeah. <laughs> We've still got our group going. Um, yeah. And last um, year, you were doing live tuition. Every day, <laughs> every day for nine weeks, we did uh, art class. I did a art class demonstration um, in the morning, and then I was also doing Wednesday evenings as well. That was a bit more. You were, relaxed. You were um, absolutely insane. It was what it was really interesting. It got me through it all. After nine weeks, I was like, "Yeah, now I need a bit of a break." But I, it gave us a routine that we didn't have. It gave us a structure. It gave us outside world. Um, and if my mum's watching, got her drawing. Yay! Started yeah. her drawing in her her new career, so she can do she can do this next year. She can be on. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> next year, you say? Yeah, you're going to do this next year. I'm going to be doing this next year. Oh goodness gracious! <laughs> um, I'm just, I was just talking to you about doing it in October. <laughs> Now you've moved me into 2022. Of course, you got you know, got to be something. <laughs> got to do something. I'd be bored when I'm so I don't do anything all day. <laughs> no, exactly. But it's, I so I can't wait to meet all the artists because I feel like I know everybody, and then I suddenly realise that actually I've only met a couple of a few, and I all because I had it with Brenda because I'm doing Southeast Open Studios. Um, I, there was a Zoom and I saw Brenda. I was like, oh, hi, Brenda. And she had, and obviously she doesn't know who I am in that situation. It's just like, oh, I probably need to loop, loop the circles up and make them make sense right now because I'm currently a name on a social media site or something. That's the thing, isn't it? So out of context, nothing's kind of working, is it? We've all, we've all been um, in this mysterious behind the screen thing so when you do see people in person it's all very shocking because you actually think that you have met them in person yeah and they don't know you so no i think in october we will have some you mean we're not back in lockdown again i don't even want to say that out loud don't even want to say those words out loud we will have some semblance of an exhibition as well as the digital delivery in October but yeah I'm sure we'll still be doing a hybrid of these events for years to come because why not why not they, they, they are, are brilliant they are brilliant they're so inspiring every time I learn something different about my practice and I mean this time I've been watching it and gone oh wait a minute I am I, I remember something about that when I was working and then I've forgotten it and it's so inspiring seeing all the different artists working in their stories and it's yeah it's great Thanks. Yesterday, David's, David's process. I mean, as a photographer, I was like, I used to do all of that. And I was like, wow. I did my, my first date with my husband went wrong because I ended up in hospital because I'd spent the day teaching photography, um, painting on paper in the dark room. But because I'm so hands on, I got very hands on with the students and getting them involved in mark making and ended up having an, uh, 
allergic reaction in, in the hospital on my first date to my husband. <laughs> and it was like, him talking about it, it was like, that's so much fun. But also you need a safety warning. Yes, you need to be careful. The marks you can make painting on the paper in the processing room. Yeah. Yeah, we lost so, slightly there. That was a bit odd. Oh, no, that was someone, uh, my husband tried to call me. Ah, <laughs> that yes, it does take it does take the signal away when that happens. Yeah, did, let's put the phone on to. Did you not know when I re wrote on the thing? Tell everyone around you you're broadcasting. Yeah, live. He's supposed to be watching. So <laughs> calling me. It's Good. always funny when people do that, and I'll just check that we are live streaming in case he was trying to call us for a reason. Shall I? Oh yeah, <laughs> that'd be a good idea because there's no one over there. Actually, yeah, no, it's okay. We are, it is a little bit frozen right now. That is probably the moment exactly. when um, when the phone rang. Oh, yeah, so there's a slight delay between yeah. Yeah. a few moments. Yeah. yeah, there's a slight delay between this and the live stream. So, yeah, it's been an interesting year, and I'm very grateful for you being um, around and supporting us and Chris and Hildegard and, and everyone else who does so much behind the scenes at Pure and makes it all happen for the artists because without you guys i i couldn't do it on my own because you do quite a lot of <laughs> you make big packages <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. you don't you don't do little things you do I big don't things do little you need things. a lot of people to make it happen yeah i don't i don't i don't play small you know that <sighs> no small is not our thing so let's just quickly show you where you can find sophie's contact details so that if you want to buy some work from Sophie, which I hope you will do, you, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to show you her page in the magazine. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Talk us through what we're looking at there. So we've got the, um, the pomegranate painting was actually done during the art classes in lockdown. That was one of the things that came out of doing those daily practices. Um, it is sold. Um, I have got it. It was interesting. Was listening, to people talk, was listening to people talking about printing and reprinting, and I was thinking of of having them reprinted. Um, and I've had um, I had it done for me. Um, but okay, hang on a minute, I'm going to have to bring you back up on screen now. But I? it's um, it's Hold it's up. fine for me. But I think that you lose so much that I don't think I'm going to do prints of it. Um, cause I think it's, it's, you lose so much. The bit that's so good about it is the paint is the quality of the paint. And in real, you get this one, it's very, very thick acrylic. Um, and you lose, it's so dead on paper. Show us, show us just like one more time. Yes. It's still stunning, but I do understand what you mean. Yeah. Oh, someone's saying that internet's on the blink now. Oh. Oh no, sorry Griselda and Jeremy. Yeah. So and then I'm gonna I'm going so go back to the magazine page. But let's just have a we have to focus it on that one. Because I was focusing it on you yep. for a moment so you could see. Um, so that's the top one, and then we've got some of the paintings. I do abstract paintings going much more into sort of landscape or rather I think I I see them as seascapes now, and then my drawing practice. Um, oh, thanks, Bev. Um, uh, then my drawing practice uh, that I've that I'm now developing a lot more. I didn't really have before before this year. I've taught. I've always taught drawing. I started teaching in 2004, and drawing and predominantly, I always I was always a life drawing teacher every college I worked at, and I've always taught it. But I never really had it as a strong path of my practice. And because of lockdown, I started teaching. I started doing the demonstrations and obviously ended up with a lot of work. And so I'm now exploring how to make that into my practice more because the actual art of drawing, the painting and drawing for me, I need both practices dependent on my mood. Um, draw, observe, I, I pretty much only do observational drawing from real life i don't i very rarely use photographs um and it's that and it's predominantly natural form so either shells or things collected on walks and things like that um and it's 
very much well being centered there. The act of sitting and drawing calms me and focuses my mind and everything. Was painting is much more the expressiveness without there's no sort of thoughts going on in the head. Well, I'm sure there are some thoughts going on in the head. There's some thoughts, but it's much <laughs> more free. It's much more just following colours around and things. Like so the painting, the what, the picture of me. Um, there's a very bright sort of orangey red section of it. It's actually moved on a little bit from there. Um, those paintings are very much. I'm following the movement as I paint. I'm following the colour patterns. And it, it sort of the picture leads me. I, I'm very free with my materials. So I use rollers and paintbrushes attached to sticks and homemade paintbrushes and things like that. And so there's a lot of accidental marks um, and you squeegee, you paint screw, metal scrapers. So you scrape the paint across and then see what the colours do and then work within them rather than you sort of looking and really concentrating on making something look like it's supposed to look like and that's amazing isn't it to have those two sides of your practice one that's quite intense looking and the other one is intense feeling yeah uh, feeling it, your way through the painting i think david and some of the others have said about that when you know, he realized his practice it wasn't based in venice it was based in him and accepting who he is and i think that's what i've learned this year has been so much learning that actually i have these different sides and that's okay. And I can work with whichever one is the one I'm needing to work with at the time. And that, so that realization has been fantastic this year. Yeah, it's given us all um, some time and space to think about what is important to us and what's important to our practice and what we want to take forward as our learning from yeah. this. Um, just going back to your painting um, and the fact that you didn't like the flatness of it, Bev is recommending somewhere in Hythe that can help you. And, yeah, that's great. And um, Annie is saying, actually, this um, goes back um, to what David was saying yesterday, is actually thinking about printing on a different type of paper. Yeah, so I've always used, um, for, uh, uh, it's, it's almost like a... Uh, watercolor paper that's got uh it's got a texture to it so it's like a very coarse canvas uh is what i've always it's what i have always traditionally you printed paintings on if i was going to re reproduce a painting but also when i was doing the so last year i was doing the digital work and that was on the same painting and so i either pay, print on that or a very metallic flat paper mm. uh, I use print space in london and they've I've got a pack of all their different types of paper. Um, but I think also it's the, I sort of realised I spend a lot of time worrying about that and actually I want to make art work more than, and it's working at the moment. I don't have time to develop a business where I have, where I can sell those sort of things because my I have my day job and that works best with my family. So whilst... We, I'm currently with my 18 month old and four year old. When they're older, then I can look at developing more of a commercial side if I want to. But right now, and I think that that's been very interesting hearing so many people saying the same thing for this season of find the right business model for you as an artist. And um, it's great to look at and how and why these communities are so good is that there's always somebody who can go, oh, no, you know, I've been there and actually this place can help you out. Mm. Um, I think what you said there about business model doesn't just work. You know, that's absolutely the, the fundamental underpinning of happiness, isn't it? It's finding the business. If, if art is your business, which... 99% of people who are watching and are part of our you know community art is your business it's the you know the means to how you're making your money it's finding the route to that that really underpins your happiness and makes you fulfilled because as an artist you're you're working in feelings you're working in emotion yeah exactly and it's uh, when you feel fake when you feel you're on the wrong path it doesn't work and people don't buy it no, and, it doesn't, and they totally 
you totally know when someone's not in alignment with themselves because things just it feels uncomfortable they can't they feel unfulfilled they're not getting where they want they just feel stuck they normally present with i feel stuck and then the next words that come out of their mouth are i need a gallery <laughs> yeah <laughs> And you're like, no, no, let's just take one. Not necessarily. Back. Not necessarily. Be careful what you wish for. The grass isn't always greener on the other side of that <laughs> of that path. But um, it is understanding, um, getting clarity. Get clarity on actually what it is that you're seeking. And then once you've got the clarity, you can find the business model that delivers that um, joy. Yeah. And I think you're um, you know, obviously working with you now and looking at things like the foundation program and stuff like that. It's that going, actually, you reassess. You don't go, right, this is where I am now. Right now, this is what's working for me. In six months' time, in September, my son starts school. Mm. So I need to go, right, what am I going to do? Well, probably not in September. I'll give myself a few months. January. January. I'll go, right, how how do I function with one at school all the time? Because also then it changes your holidays and how everything, for, and yeah, as everything changes, you need to relook at what's going on and how it's working for you and if it is or isn't working yeah review reflect yeah tune into yourself because living living a lie is the most painful uncomfortable and quite frankly depressing thing you could do <laughs> you just want to live in your own truth and be honest to yourself yeah we lie to ourselves don't we why do we do that i don't get that anyway <laughs> Because someone on Instagram told you you've got to smile this certain way. and Yeah, different. and wear makeup and present at the screen. And Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I probably was. I was off that day. <laughs> I was off school that day. <laughs> but it's amazing. I was driving home today and there were these three girls on, sitting at a roundabout. There's three girls walking past. And they all looked like sort of weird versions of Kim Kardashian. Oh dear. They all had the same glasses, they all had the same hair, they were all there was no movement going on. They were probably like 17. I'm so grateful I grew up when I did. Firstly, no cameras. There's very few no cameras, no social media. <laughs> that was great. But we just kind of have we had so much fun. Mm. And we did it wasn't you know, this there wasn't so many people going, This is the answer. If you do this, this is the answer. There was more like, yeah, figure it out. It'll be all right. There's no one. There's no one answer because, as a human race, we are we are all originals, aren't we? We're all originals. There's only one version of us. So you just have to listen, listen to others, but also listen to yourself, and then find your way. Find your way, and that way won't stay the same forever. Yeah. It will keep, you know, because as I've said many times, you know, linear is dead. So we don't want that. So you have to be prepared for the up and down and enjoy every single moment of it. And, you know, that's what you're doing. You're, this is the moment where you're at right now. The making prints doesn't work for you right now, but it might do in the future. And you might find a solution to that in the future that works for you. Digital might work for you. Photography, who knows? But at the moment, this is working for you. And you're going to do as a bit of a demonstration, aren't you now? Yeah. <laughs> Just like that segue. <laughs> you're going to do as a little demonstration on drawing and what you've been doing and how you teach your drawing. So that's great. Yeah. I'm going to hand the screen over to you, my love. Hello. There we go. Hello, everybody. Um, so uh, my demonstration, so I'm going to hope not make everyone sick. So this is the work that I've been working on uh, recently, the last few pictures. And it's, I do lots of drawing and lots of it is very small in sketchbooks. And I ended up creating these sort of, that, so it's a collage. So some of it is drawn on the paper. Some of it is, is there any monoprint? There's no, this is all drawn actually. Um, but there, there are collages of different drawings that I did over different times. Um, some of it's with, inks but predominantly with pencils um and i sort of looked at it and this is i enjoy this i can practically make these sort of pieces and so i'm now in a process of playing so what i do generally do is so i work out where i am with my processes and then i start playing around with different types of materials and so i'm starting to work on a new piece which is uh adding do, not just drawing but different types of print making and things so these stencils are made are the cutout of the 
paper from the previous piece. So all of these are drawings on that piece. Um, and then adding printing. So these are different types of monoprints. Um, so these are this is some screen printing and mono printing, adding together the feathers um, and then drawings again. Um, so I was going to do a little demonstration, do a little five minute draw. Um, I don't know if anyone where's my time, time. I don't know if anyone feels like. Oh, Monty Python drawing. Um, I don't know if anyone feels like um, drawing with me. Feel free to grab a pen and paper and something in front of you and I'm just going to just spend five minutes drawing. I'm drawing um, an acorn cap. So you didn't warn me that I was going to have to do some drawing. You don't have to. You've got a cup of tea in front I know, of you. But I did love it. Like when we did it at the clubhouse, I really loved it. And I've got my piece of paper to shield my hand so I can't see myself. I was going to say, you can just draw your tea. Quick plug, Attic Teas. Oh, Attic Teas. Hopefully everybody's got their key. Quick plug. If you haven't, you've still got time to register to win your own freebie. But you can draw anything. And that's the bit that's really important is any single thing in front of you. Um, I'm just going to use a soft and a hard pencil. I say picking up two hard soft pencils. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know what that means, uh, soft is a six. Is, so I use six Bs, ten Bs. And the higher the B number, the softer. And what it means is it blends more easily. It's often people say it's darker. It's not darker. It's the powder softer. Um, so it looks like it makes a darker line, but you can rub it out and blend it more. And then that's just an HB. So I'm just going to do a quick five minute draw of how I do it. And um, yeah, yeah, we all are individual. So I always start with a soft pencil, very loose. Um, looking, thinking about negative space. So any non-drawers out there, negative space is the shapes created from the from the thing you're drawing and around the thing you're drawing. And I look at the ideas of the angles in front of you. So which way are they facing? What's lining up with what? And I'm always very relaxed. I have, this is the first drawing I've done today. So I'm not gonna pressurize myself to get it perfect each time. Some days you won't be in the mood to draw, that's okay. Um, I try and have a drawing practice which means that I draw every day because I want to be Louisa Crispin when I grow up, um, <laughs> which will happen one day. Um, so I'm just looking at the shapes of it, of how I've laid it down. And so what I tend to do is I start, I get the general idea in. So I start with my pencil on the side. So the marks I'm making are quite soft and flat. And then I'll often use a blender. So I, a friend has made them, but I tend to buy them. So it's just sort of a pencil blender. And what this does is smooth out the graphite. Um, I use, they tend to use graphite or charcoal. Um, and actually have started making my own charcoal this year. Um, I always think about sites. So, a lot with these collages one of the sort of practical reasons for doing them the way that i do them is that i can i have very small sketchbooks that i work in because with the children and things like that actually get time in the studio doesn't always happen um so by having a small sketchbook it means that i can just sit down and do a very quick sketch in it and rather than it sort of not becoming anything, it's now being developed into these colleges. Um, so when I'm working, I also think a lot about the, the direction of the mark. So like with the blending, I'm looking at the flatness here and I'm trying to make it flat. So I'm doing straight lines, but here is a curve. So I can use my blender to curve around the corner. There isn't quite enough truck. Uh, graphite on the page to make it work. I'm now working a bit with the darker pencil, with probably about halfway. I have a egg timer to time me. Which... I thought that came with your attic teas thing, but it 
It didn't, but it matches. It you does know? match. When I saw that, I was like, oh, I didn't get one of those. No, no, that's my attic tea needs to do a deal with them. Um, I like egg timers. They make me happy. So now I start looking at, trying to look at details, because this is just a quick sketch. Um, so starting really looking at the thing and focusing more. And this is especially with, with mindful practice. This part of it is when you really start to not notice the world around you and notice the thing in front of you. And hopefully one of the things you get out of developing an observational drawing practice is that you start looking more and noticing. And at this time of year, it's just amazing. The buds going, I went to Bedgebury yesterday and I've never really looked at the buds, the flower buds of conifer trees. Is conifer, does it? Not, uh, Con well, yeah. Not the, yeah, yeah, the, the National Ar Arboretum for... Um, the pine, pine, pine tree. They're yeah. pine laser, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and they're just, it's just amazing. Not like, it's just a little bit too bright on that paper, so we're just not quite getting the detail. Um, that's better well i've drawn my cup <laughs> it's it so it's it's always it doesn't matter what you're drawing and actually one of my favorite oh, lost it one of my favorite pictures i have in my studio a friend drew for me and it is it's just a series of stick chairs and it's really simple, but they're just very good observations of the different form of chairs. So now, at the, oh, the time has run out. There's five minutes. There you go. You can lose a lot of time when you're drawing. So then, so I would take that and I do more. Um, I use, probably to offend everybody, um, I use hairspray to fix my pencil. Oh, do you? Yeah. That's been um, a discussion this week, hasn't it? How to fix it? Uh, I really struggle with chemical fixative. I've always absolutely hate the smell. I just it just goes very bad with me. Um, and I find uh, just a very small amount of cheap fixative uh, hair hair um, spray fixes it. Any particular brand you'd like? To I like cheap. I like pound shop stuff. Pound shop hairspray works for you. The biggest can you can get from the 99 pencil pound shop, I find works for me that. Um, the smell can also be quite offensive, but in a different way, in a floral way. Um, yeah, it's, I haven't so far, if any more superior people who know more than me about it, um, have different way. I, I struck, yeah, I struggle with it. The thing, you do have to be very careful not to spray too close because you could dependent on what you're using and if you're using mixed media oh yeah so someone's told me about soy milk have, um, how do you use it carol do give you, us a lesson in how you use soy yeah milk. so carol's on next week we'll have to see how carol oh. soya milk so Just there's loose, there's, like there's sort of lots of things i haven't had time I, one of my jobs that i want to do is try and actually scientifically research the different ways of doing it properly um yes. so far for me hairspray works uh, yeah uh, it'd be nice to find something that was ethical not chemical yeah to do that so show us your drawing again because you oh. quickly whipped that away so. um oh can you i don't know if you can focus Where's the yeah with all the hashing i love that all the hashing on the side of the cup yeah so this one so this page i will then i'll keep drawing onto this page and create a base right so, I have, so you sort of have the base layers and then those you build up so this is the latest one and what i would do at this point is to cut out all the pieces i'm not going to cut out because i'm worried i'll cut myself so I'm, here's one i made earlier um so i just use these sort of little scalpels Oh, always be health and safety. Don't use those. <laughs> yeah. always be Louise, health and safety. Louise was saying, look at Jackson's art blog because they've probably researched it. Oh yeah, they did. Carol is saying you spray it with a with a diffuser, which is what I thought you probably. Oh, you're still trying to, yeah. Yes, still that's on my ne next on my list. I'll get 
um, so so that so this one so i started this one the base paper was these are the stencils from other drawings so it's it's all the things so i hate waste but i draw a lot so this is me trying to work out processes i can use i'm i'm very fine art so my friend doesn't know i have a degree and masters in uh, contemporary fine art practice and my master's European fine art practice so it's always there's a lot of fine art thinking going on behind and I have this hatred and this need to reuse and reuse until it's finished its natural life mm. and so um, with the cutouts I kept all the cutouts from this piece with no con no idea what I wanted to do with them and then I started working on the, I started going, oh, how can I explore it? And I then started using the stencils. And this is the first process of them, but they work quite well. So I've used the stencils as a base, which I've then mono printed um, onto. So I can show you. I did some, come on. Where's the camera? I don't know if you can see. So it's, uh, it's very, it's actually quite detailed. The ink's drawn into and then the stencils put over the top so that you've got the same, so you've reused and reused it. Looks like a mini city. I know, there's so many things going on. And then I started thinking it looked like writing. Um, it's a I bit said, like David's um, leaves yesterday, yeah. when he, the chlorophyll leaves. Yeah, so it's all, it's all those sort of, yeah, processing. I love processes. I enjoy the pro the making them. So then I get to this point and then I'm using blue tack. I don't normally use blue tack. Now at this point, I would then start playing around um, with putting different pieces up that I'd made. Um, so this this one, I generally have a vague idea of what of sort of an of some theme behind it. So this one is this bird. So it's two birds with this sort of idea of talking to each other. So I will take quite a long time exploring, putting everything together. And then what usually happens is at the end, I then do a few more drawings on top of it. So you would not You would normally, once you've decided on the finished scenario of where you're placing everything, would you then stick those down permanently? So then everything is then uh, stuck down with spray mount and, and weighted. And then when it's in the glass, it's also, I haven't perfected framing yet. I'm, um, I don't really, I don't love it. Um, I'm happy with it, but I don't love it yet. So right. So you, you mean in the, the in this, I, I want, this is just in a very natural wood. And mm. then the, the first one I ever did, which was a beach one, which was, that was actually started. It was mono printing and then drawing on top. Um, that's in a white frame, which works better. Um, it's one of the, like Louisa has, you know, working out the way that you frame it. It has to have the glass, I feel. It has to have the glass to make the collage really stick flat. Yes, I know what you're saying. I, When I'm looking at it, I'd really like to see it more as a specimen. So you treat it more as a specimen. So I, you know, more like in a case. Yeah. Like you, actually, you can have the glass. Um, you can get the weight of that um, image flat in other ways, not just yeah. being stuck to the glass. I'd start to think about that because it is. It's lots of specimens of drawings and collage and such like. I'd like to see it in a more like a tray frame kind of thing with a spacer and it having a bit more, It to me, it looks like it's a bit confined. Yes, yes, that's exactly where I had the problem. And then when you're saying that, it's like the, the things I love, like when I when I was young, um, the v &A, old school v &A, when you had the boxes of trays and those exactly. um, Pitt Rivers Museum, where I did my right. first degree at Oxford Brooks, I spent a lot of time at Pitt Rivers playing in the amazing rooms it's, it's the artifacts and the objects and finding them and i'm interested in that boundary between art and science and how we yeah, the language used I'm in art about that, what's that the museum at the horniman yes the horniman, the horniman. i'm thinking the horniman when i look at it i think it's like the specimen trays that they used to bring back 
from you know the work the the tours that they went on and all the plants and even at Kew and um yes it's best not to let the glass be in oh. the work I completely agree Bev and I think that um I think when we're able to do this it'd be really good if you and I go and see Bev and we do some experimenting because I think that you could you could make these exquisite like specimens and really um really praise what you've got there really you know honor what you've got there but at the moment they're just they're just a bit trapped yes very much. they could look amazing if it's they exactly. were in this kind of i can see it now in that i did this to louisa and louisa will remember it i'm like i've got an idea in my head of how that could look and it would look awesome it needs to be in like a more of a box in a more of a tray is that i mean i think the with your art, with our, all all of our art practices, you go through different processes. And they, I'm very much exploring this area at the, what I'm making, and then you go to the product at the end and go right. How do you? How do I display it? How do I? You see these ones. I think someone said this would make most amazing fabric. Yes, absolutely. and those sort of things. And this one, I'm like, oh no, actually, the, to me, there needs to be a flattening. The idea is the floor, is the bait, is this thing that you ignore and don't really look at. And then you start looking at it and picking out all the pieces. And so actually, this is something that could be copied and flattened and that worked. Make an amazing textile. So he's just saying, take Leslie with you to the framer. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling eyes. Because <laughs> she knows that um, it was expensive. My outcomes are not cheap. I'm sorry. <laughs> But it is oh, how you present your artwork is as much part of the artwork as the artwork itself. It's all so intrinsic to the finished piece. Um, it's not separate. It's yeah. one whole thing. But, yeah, I agree that that could be a textile as well. And then how and you're also the, the how, good, how you are with yours to others. So like Louise's, I have a couple of Louise's. I've actually just got the latest, the, um, she did the postcard, this uh, postcard project on Instagram yes. where, um, and I got three of them. So they're the frames at the moment. So they're going to be the same. I do these big gray box frames with it floating in the middle with the side showing and everything. And I'm like, yeah, this, it just, it makes them, it, it it's and they also look a bit like specimens like yeah, but the idea is that butterfly specimen that box frame butterfly specimen other people's work i can see it in mine no but that's normal isn't it that's normal as a as the artist it's like trying to sell it to someone and telling someone your story uh, it's so difficult being you're so close to it that it's very difficult that's why it's so good for all the artists to do this come and talk about their work and really explore it in front of an audience because you become much more comfortable with it and then you can really dwell on it and make the the right decisions for your work yeah exactly mm. and it's, it's also this is very new so my paintings is an old practice um if I, i'm gonna make everyone sick again um so my these are sort of a I've been doing this for ages and I like them in a white box frame. Mm. So it's, it, they're very sim to me, they're very sort of simplistic, simple little landscapes and that works. Um, well, it's my bigger ones. This is, um, oh, I'm in the way. Um, then you can see it. this one, it's yes. getting more depth to it. But those ones, I'm not sure I'm ever going to finish. <laughs> keep, keep playing with it. Um, I haven't, usually i would never frame those pieces like this one here i wouldn't frame it if someone buys it they're welcome to frame it but i like the edges because there's so many accidents on them yeah i love the fact that they that the uh, we've been talking about this all week haven't we it's been the broken edge week um the broken edge week <laughs> it, it, uh, and when she was saying that that's what annoys me about this piece i want broken edges and I you don't... can and you can get that if it's not the, if it's not so tightly framed yeah if, if if the way you present that work and that is all part of that process the evolutionary process like play is so important i don't think you can underestimate 
we are so worried about failing all the time. And actually, instead of seeing it as failure, see it as playing. Play takes away that fear of failure because you can just play and it doesn't matter where you go. And like you said, you're using blue tack and you put it on the page and that doesn't, you get them all on, you don't feel right, you move them again. And I, you cannot underestimate the power of play in an artist's practice. And so, it's the bit that's so important when, so I don't believe that degrees are right for everybody, but the bit of a degree that was so important was you have to play. You have these periods that you have to do the playing in. And what's so interesting is actually the more places, so for example, the foundation program with Pure, there are other places, non-degrees, that teach you how to have your playing periods that you need to be able to readdress and work out. And the only problem with these videos is that I then get, I want to play with everyone else's toys. So I bought graphite powder and medium, <laughs> which is sitting over there waiting to get played with. That's Obviously, I've already great. made a complete, I already spilt it all over the dining room table. So <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's going to get very messy with that one. But there's so many, there's what's so exciting. And so uh, I, you really need to have a collaboration group with Pure of, us getting to sit and play with each other's toys. Well, we so, will try that. We're uh, on Monday. This coming Monday, we're going to we're going to do a bit of show and tell with some of the new artists, so they can show us. But we will do that when we can get back into the real world and do. We used to always do demonstrations and things at our real. Um, I'm sure Vincent will remember years ago. He used to do. He did some demonstrating of etching for us, and Louise has done some demonstrating. You know, it's something that I think is invaluable. The other thing that you said that really hit home for me is the mindfulness of what you do as an artist. And that can't be underestimated, can it? It can be your safe place, but, all, uh, you know, it can be painful as well if you in that process where you're allowing yourself to lose it in order to find it again and be and to be confident that you will find it. Yes. And in realisation, when you have a day that doesn't work, that it's some days don't work. It's it's whether it's bad juju in the wear, whatever it is. Some days you just you can't paint. Some days you can't draw. Uh, some days you need my do my master's practice. I wrote plays, yeah, and I made prints. I didn't do any painting. I didn't do any drawing. It was all and my degree as well. All installation performance, um, in your head stuff, and I needed that at that point in time. And some days I'll need to do theory, really theoretical work and make something very, very fine art that no one's going to understand unless they've got a master's. But then other days you just want to paint stick men walking down the street. And that's all of those practices are good and right and true and everything else if you're doing what you need to do for you and you'll make good work at the end of it. Absolutely. Be in alignment with yourself and your and your soul and, your, and it'll all be it will all work out. There is a pathway for everyone. There's no right or wrong. And I think that's really come through from these talks when you hear about everybody's individual journey. And where do you see because now you're in a phase of your life where you've got small children and, you know, you've had a really you've had a really, as you say, a fine art upbringing of that um, going through the uh, degree and then the master's. Taking, you know, the normal life path aside, what what's the dream? With my work, um, I, work. I wanted to, sorry to my husband watching, I want to do a PhD. <laughs> so, in, um, sorry, Alistair. <laughs> sorry, I want to do a PhD in how we talk about art. Um, but I haven't worked out exactly what it, yeah, there's a, I'm starting the ideas of what I want to do with my PhD and I'm trying to work out the best time to do it. What's the question? Um, yeah, what's the question? Because you have to have a question, don't you? Yeah, it's about lang how we talk about art, both as an so yeah, there's something like drawing and well-being and everything, and how we talk about art. Because I, with the art school, the majority majority I would say of my students have always been adults who someone told them they can't do art or they're not artistic, and I fundamentally disagree that I think everyone has something artistic it doesn't mean you have to draw or want to draw there's or there's always a whether you it's the way you dress whether it's your hair whatever it is 
there is no such thing as I don't, I am not artistic, because there's always some way that we express ourselves. Um, so there's something within the language and how we talk about it and express it that's, that's my PhD. Um, I totally agree. It's that cultural norms that have made us think that we only either have one side of the brain or the other. We're either logical or creative, which is complete and utter rubbish. And I think, it, the, <laughs> I think it's also a problem in creativity is a really the, a really easy way. Say you're angry and you don't know why. Go and let rip on a canvas. You don't need to understand the words. You don't need to understand the emotions, but you can, the physical release. Other people, you can do it in sport. There's lots of different ways of doing it, but we need to be focusing on that rather than, you know. Yeah, how, it's about how we process, isn't it? Yeah. How can we effectively process stuff? And that's really interesting because, actually, I just looked across and Jane has said there, the process of my art is my mind. Yeah and it has saved me this year yeah do it the actual i love the process of making and that there's never yeah you know, with with any form of mindful and meditation stuff it can get a bit boring it's the best part of art is it can't get boring because there's a billion and one different processes or there's a different material you can add there's a different paint there's a different something you can add a little bit to always be able to keep the process moving forward yeah, there's no right or there's no one way, is there? There's so many very, I mean, we've seen that. You know, this is the second lot of Art360 we've done and there's been no two presentations that have been the same. Yeah. Every single one. Annie, Annie wants you to be warned that PhDs can be very draining. Yeah. <laughs> so what could go wrong doing that with two small children? Oh, no, I think she's been talking to Alistair. And um, so unless you want to be a theorist, but um, I, I mean, I have it in my heart to do a PhD at some point, but you have to pick your moment. Yeah. I, like, I'm going to show you my, I'm going to come back up on screen now. because um, There we go. Okay. I did my little drawing. Yay. I'll send it to you. Oh, it's very difficult to see, isn't it? On the, There you are. Look, it's a, guess what it is? Attic teacup. <laughs> it's got a bumblebee on it. <laughs> It was quite difficult to um, show that on the screen. Thank you so much, Sophie. That's been absolutely fascinating. And I I really look forward to you and I going to the framers together. I know I Alice, think, this is like Alice's I'm... night of horror because I'm going to take you to the framers and I'm known for my uh, very complicated framing. <laughs> but it's one, I think once I've got a few of the pieces finished, then I can explore how to do it. Um, so it's, um, but it's, yeah, that, that will come when it needs to come. It will, it will. And you just need to keep playing and not feel the pressure. Yeah. Yeah, it's been fascinating. I always love talking to you. I love it when you do the drawings with us as well. I love doing the demonstrations. Going to do another demonstration, aren't you? Um, not next week we've got um, the girls doing their show and tell, but the last week of um, April. Yeah doing another drawing session for the pure clubhouse if anyone wants to join that and i do you know what i think you might quite like the whole digital art nfts thing if you want to join well because actually the nfts i was thinking that these i would love to do these make them make, make make them so there's the broken edge that is a digital print but that could be a way of result but it's also i mean it's so, so exciting in the world right now because there is so much possibility you could animate you. that, couldn't you? You could animate it so the pieces where you're doing the animation on the board there with blue tech, you could actually yeah. animate it on a yeah, incredible. So yeah, hopefully you'll join me on Saturday night where we start to explore what on earth this all means and how you do it. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> if anyone, June Southeast Open Studios, um, I'm exhibiting with Susie Ramsey Smith in Vines Cross, but I know Brenda's doing it as well. Um yeah. lots of people. I think Jane Cordell's Jane Cordell's yeah. doing it. Yeah, Southeast Open Studios. Go and see art in people's studios. I can't wait. And um, the gallery at Bannantyne's Hotel and Spa is open. Obviously, um, you can't uh, eat or drink inside the hotel, but you can go in and see it. And But it will be properly open um, towards the end of May. And we'll obviously be reopening the galleries at the Curlew and the Small Holding. So that's exciting. It's all. It, it will all start happening. It will all start happening, but I think we'll remain hybrid and we'll re remain um, 
you know, yeah, just taking on board the benefits of the digital opportunity. And that's, you know, that's something for you to think about in your art practice as well, which is incredible. We do have a little question down here. Mm. Oh, mono prints can be very libera liberating. Oh, yeah, love mono print. I did, I, I put it down somewhere. I did Julia's wool. Um, oh, it's here. Um, uh, Julia, I had a piece of Julia's wool and I was just following the lines. It's so much fun drawing. If you, if you need it, get some wool off Julia, the raw stuff, and just try and draw the curls of her beautiful Wensleydale wool. It's stunning. And that's really mindful as well, isn't it? That's a really... Oh, but it, the smell of the wool, the, it's it's a beautiful material. It's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of healing stuff going on. Well, anything coming from Julia Dash is healing. Anything so. from Julia. <laughs> Anything. Yeah. Julia's, I think, Jul is Julia this weekend? No, Julia was last weekend. Yeah, Julia's uh, last weekend. You can watch her recording via Facebook, via the website. On <laughs> <laughs> You're so well trained. <laughs> and it's Julia's fault I'm here. Yes, she it introduced us. Yeah, Julia introduced us, and the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> yeah, never to, get, never to escape now. <laughs> thank you so much sophie that's been oh, really goodness. fascinating and really interesting to hear about your how you approach your work and then that demonstration was lovely it's really nice to see someone actually drawing and um, doing that in front of us and it'd be really nice to be able to do that in real time can't and wait cannot wait i much prefer drawing in a group is way more fun yeah it is it, although that's great and i've really enjoyed doing it in this but in a group i can bring all my materials and then i yeah. have a few different materials to play with and that and now i make my own charcoal as well so you can <laughs> who is it who wants to borrow your charcoal maker louisa i think louisa i've got them right here ready for you <laughs> got it ready for you so you can come and pick up your painting fran's painting from me and go and take that to louisa and then come back when where you can do that now you're allowed <laughs> All right. Lovely, everyone. It's so nice to see everyone this evening. Thank you, Sophie, so much for being so sharing, as always, and for supporting everybody as well. You've done such an amazing job of supporting the whole programme of Art360. Tomorrow night we have Richard Hayes. Can't wait. Love Richard Hayes' paintings. And I have seen on his website, he's doing sculpture now. So I should be having a little chat with him about that, because that was news to me. Yeah. <laughs> So, no, I'm looking forward to that. And then over the weekend, we've got the Fran White film that's been made by Caitlin Locke, which is, I have had a sneaky preview. I'm not going to tell you, but it is awesome. And Will Devlin, who I interviewed just a couple of weeks ago, so there's the, that will be going live. So, really, lots, lots to look forward to. See you all tomorrow. Thanks, Sophie. Thank you. Bye. Bye.